Hi everyone, this is Mr. Robotic Warfare, and I've been working on some really cool things in Minecraft that I wanted to, to briefly show off today. So, as some of you may know, over the last couple of videos that I've posted in Minecraft, the main goal that I've been working towards for the uh, foreseeable future is to try and build a fully operational redstone computer without using any redstone. Uh, said more concisely, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to build an entire redstone computer based solely upon observers and rails as the main way of uh, doing logic. Pistons as well, but that's kind of a corollary. So over the past couple of videos, I've shown off some of the things that I've been making. The first is what you see here, which is a 4-bit carry look-ahead adder. Then that was later expanded to 8-bits. And then what I did after that was I went through uh, all of the, these different kinds of logic gates that I've designed. And what I wanted to do is actually take these logic gates, uh, because this uses a, pretty much in a completely different system uh, than these logic gates. What this relies on is essentially using redstone blocks to do a lot of the different kinds of logic functions, primarily using uh, redstone blocks to do an AND gate. So you can look at this right here to see these two rails are connected. This is essentially a two input AND gate where once both of the rails are retracted, this rail will then turn off and then send a pulse. So as opposed to that, uh, the next thing that I had designed is what you see here, uh, which is a, a different kind of AND gate that doesn't use redstone blocks. And this is more or less an implication gate, right? This piston needs to be extended and this observer needs to pulse at the same time for this to actually work. I talked about that in my last video, uh, which will be linked down in the description. So. I wanted to go ahead and try and make an adder that combines all of these concepts that you see in front of you into something that actually functions. And I am happy to say that I've been able to do that. Uh, so what you see here is the 8-bit version, and as is tradition with what I'm building, uh, basically we're doing one block per bit, so you can see this is 8 wide tileable for 8 different bits. Apologies for the lag there. So what are you looking at? This is an 8-bit ripple carry adder with zero redstone dust and it has zero redstone well and proper because i don't use any redstone blocks in this either uh, so the idea here is that once again this is a, a device that's capable of adding two numbers together uh, i'm going to do a couple of demonstrations and then we're going to get into an explanation of how it works so let's do the simplest possible addition here which is one plus one uh, i'll just quickly note what i'm actually doing here this is simply the input synchronizer this is everything that is the actual um, the actual adder itself. So when I when I toggle this, you'll see that it just goes down the line here. So what I'm doing by placing observers is essentially selecting what input I want to give it. Obviously, when this is actually implemented with real hardware, it's going to have you know its own input selector and all that kind of stuff. But this is just for testing. So let's do one plus one here really fast. Send that off, and you see that we're going to get two right there. Uh, if you don't know binary or how full adders work um, i would recommend going to find another video i might eventually make a video on how this stuff works explaining it myself um, but for today i'm going to assume that you understand binary and how full adders work so there is your calculation there for one plus one and just to show off that this is a ripple carry adder we're now going to do the traditional ripple test which is almost the biggest number plus the smallest number and we're going to watch that carry ripple all the way up to the top there so we send that off and there's your ripple nice and fast too which is quite nice so that is our adder and then just to show that uh, we are not missing any functionality here hopefully i didn't mess that up i may have removed the blocks prematurely oh no it looks like we're okay so let's just do like a staggered test here so we're going to do every other on the top, and then the other, every other on the bottom. And one more. There we go. So then what we should see now, once again, is all those outputs get sent out. And you see that that ripple is nice and fast, which is one of the cool things about this technology. We're gonna do a timing comparison at the end as well. So, that is the full adder. Now let's explain a little bit about how it works. So let's just jump over. I built a, uh, how's this for pixel art? Eh? This is a schematic of what a full adder looks like. Uh, so that bit in blue is an XOR gate or an exclusive OR gate. The bit in red is an AND gate. 
and the bit in orange is an OR gate, a normal OR gate. So essentially what's happening when you're doing a full adder is you have two stages here, two half adders as they're called, which is made up of one of these two things. And the idea here is to essentially compute for the first stage with these two numbers A and B, you can see that A goes here and here, B goes here and here, and this third signal, which we'll get to, goes off to the second half adder. But the idea here is that an XOR gate, just as a quick refresher, is only on if one of the two inputs are on, but not both. Which means that if A is on and B is off, then we're good, or if B is on and A is off, then we're good. If they're both or neither, then we're not going to get anything. So essentially, this tells me if only one of them is on, and an AND gate, as the name implies, is only on if both A and B are on. So only one of these is going to be on at any given time. If they're both present, the AND gate is going to go on. And if only one of them is present, then the XOR gate is going to go on. So then what we do is we take a carry in signal from the previous stage, put that into an XOR gate with the output from the second half adder. That turns into our sum bit. And then we use another AND gate here to check against the output from this XOR gate and the carry in. Then we OR those two together, and that essentially gives us our carry out for the next stage. Like I said, this is just a really quick overview. I'm assuming that you know most of this. I would recommend highly going to find another video from somebody else detailing how this actually works. So let's now remind ourselves what these logic gates look like. So the XOR gate kind of looks like this configuration here. Really, if you want to recognize my XOR gate, you can look for you know two observers with then two pistons facing. And then the AND gate essentially is com composed of a piston and an observer uh, where the piston is pushing into the path of the observer. So now, looking over here, you can roughly see what's going on. So this is roughly the first XOR gate right here. You can see this little T shape right here like we talked about. That's the first XOR gate. Then on the other side, the next AND gate is right here. So this is vertical instead of horizontal. But you can see that this piston, piston is being pushed down, and this observer is the thing that's actually triggering. So this right here is the one input of the AND gate, and this is the other input. And together the output goes right here. So that's the first one. Then we have the second XOR gate over here. And now the second AND gate is very hard to spot, but it's right here. This is the second AND gate. And then once again, in Minecraft, um, OR gates are actually very, very simple to do. You essentially just have two blocks that are powering the same rail. So it could essentially look like anything. But in this case, uh, all of the OR gates are kind of wedged in the middle here. Uh, and this is really where the magic happens right here. This whole super dense mess of stuff right here is all of the carry logic. So this is the module within the machine that's actually doing the computation and the propagation of the carries. If you were to think about this in the purest sense, for those of you that are familiar with it, technically the way that I've implemented this is more like a carry cancel adder than what you would traditionally associate with a ripple adder, carry cancel adders being something that really only exists in Minecraft. Um, but the implementation overall can be used to do the ripple carry arithmetic, which is what I'm using for it for here. Uh, so. Summarizing again, we've got one AND gate, two AND gate, one XOR, two XOR, and then the OR gate all smushed into here. And that is basically what is represented down here. So let's go ahead and explore in a little bit more depth what is going on in the center of all of this. So this is a very complicated piece of hardware. I'm going to do my best to explain it. I've done a little bit of color coding. Uh, but I wanted to quickly trace the signals and explain how this is working because this is really the crux of the machine. I struggled for several months to try and figure out how to build a ripple carry adder with the hardware that I've developed. It's not a super simple thing. So once again, remember, this is essentially what we're looking at here. So on the blue side here, this is the output from the first XOR gate. So that's that guy right there. Uh, I've extended these uh, these lines a little bit just to make it more clear, this is not actually what it looks like in the machine. So we've got our XOR output there and our first end output there coming into the machine here. So what actually needs to happen? Let's just trace this carry for a second. So the lifetime of a carry is it goes in to this XOR, right? That becomes the sum bit. And then from there, what we want to do 
is we use it as well in this AND gate. So you see that that carry line comes over here and is being used in the AND gate. So this AND gate is the special one. This is the thing that's actually doing the carry math because the carry in from one stage, excuse me, the carry out from one stage is used as the carry in as the next stage. So you can imagine this essentially looping around here being used to actually feed the carries. So what's happening with this AND gate essentially is there's a series of AND gates. And as long as uh, this XOR gate is true, what's gonna happen is it's gonna continuously loop around. So the carry signal, assuming that all of the XOR gates are true, the carry is gonna go in and then out and then in and then out in a loop. And that is essentially what this system is doing. So we've got our AND input and our XOR input. That XOR input is being used as seen down there as one of the inputs to the second AND gate. And that's happening right here. So this rail line is energized. We're powering this piston via QC. So that's our AND2 input. The second AND2 input is coming from here. And if we remember correctly, that is from the carry signal. So the carry signal actually on this side of the machine would be the carry in. And that's that rail right here. So you can imagine that we would have something else facing in this way that would function as our carry. So those two things get ANDed together here. The output of that AND gate gets put into this rail, looped back in, and then this is essentially our OR gate. Because if you remember, the OR gate uses the output of the one AND gate and the output of the other AND gate. That other AND gate is coming in here into this observer. So this rail right here basically constitutes an OR gate all by itself. And like we said, that OR gate is then used to, to take the carry out signal and put it into the next carry in. And what you can actually see here is that this rail is sloped up into this space right here, which is triggering this observer, which is in fact the second input of the second AND gate for the next slice. And this is essentially what's happening is that you have this rotation that's going on. Oop, excuse me, that was the wrong game mode. <laughs> Let's get back up here. Nope. See, the thing about me and Minecraft is that I'm very good at figuring out how to build things, but actual game mechanics and like playing the game, not quite as much. I don't know the, uh, the thing for spectator mode to speed up, so I apologize for the slow rise, but it's about the journey, isn't it? So, as we said, this is the OR gate. It's going in and then out again. Now there's an alternating slice here, but if we look at what's happening here, once again, this is gonna be my AND gate. It's gonna go back into here. This observer here is gonna power this rail through this block. And you can see essentially what's happening here is that we have alternating rail types and each one is using to shift it over to the next slice. So as we have a signal that comes in, it gets propagated and basically goes in this loop. And these blocks right here, these AND gates, are what are actually used to synchronize things. So if we, for a second, let's just say that, like I was saying over here, if all of the AND gates are active, then we just get to see the carry ripple through the machine. So let's just quickly move all of these AND gates down, and we will slow down the game speed. And we're going to go ahead and give it a carry in signal here. What we're going to see is that carry rippling all the way through. And if we slow down the game even more, what we'll get to see is that being energized, this observer, that observer, up into the next one. And you can kind of see the cycle that's happening here, round and around and around. And if any one of these blocks were to be removed, the carry essentially gets cut off and it can't continue propagating. So that's why I was saying that this is in essence a, a carry cancel adder um, if you think about it from a certain perspective. So then simultaneously with this carry stuff that's going on here, we are also using the output of this carry signal up here to then drive the output of the OR gate to the next slice. So when we're looking down here, once again, we have this OR gate output here to the carry out. Uh, but one of the other things that we need is we need to use that carry in in the next slice as well. So then it is essentially being propagated up here 
and is being used as the input uh, to essentially the, the second part of the XOR gate. So I know this is not super clear. I apologize, um, but hopefully I did a decent job of explaining what's going on. Um, but yeah, this is what I had to show to you today. The 8-bit uh, ripple carry adder. Obviously, this can be stacked uh, as much as you please. You would probably get some issues, though, um, after a while because of the delay that's incurred by doing a ripple carry. So speaking of delay, let's talk characteristics here. So I'm going to go down to my four input, or excuse me, four bit carry uh, carry look ahead adder. So one of the cool things about carry look ahead adders is that they are constant time devices, which means that no matter what computation you're doing, it's always going to take the same amount of time. Uh, so the two tests that I'm using here for these guys are zero plus one and seven plus one. What I essentially mean by that is uh, just a single bit propagating through the machine and um, doing that full carry test like we did earlier. So for this machine, for four bits, it is a 24 game tick computation, or 12 redstone ticks, 24 game ticks uh, to do any computation on this machine. So if we were doing just the single bit here, getting that output, that's 24 game ticks. If we wanted to do the same thing, but bigger, doing the seven plus one test as I call it, to get that output over there, that is still 24 game ticks. Now, the 8-bit version is obviously slightly slower, but not by much. So for 8 bits, for 4 more bits, uh, we're now up to 38 game ticks for an entire computation. Uh, what have we got set up here? We've got, uh, oh, we've got that test set up. So we're going to do the, uh, the full carry test here. Set that up, play over to the output, and you will see that... Oh, this one was actually doing it uh, to the to the overflow indicator. So, but essentially, we've got that that full carry test. So this one operates in thirty eight ticks. Now, ripple carry adders are not constant devices. It depends on what you're doing. So the cool thing is that for just this one bit, for eight bits, it's sixteen ticks or eight redstone ticks to do a single bit computation here. And then essentially the longest that you'd see is 44 ticks for 8 bits. So this is an entirely different paradigm. We're basically comparing this 8-bit machine against this 8-bit machine right here. And you, what you can see is that it is loads smaller, and we're only sacrificing 6 game ticks, right? That one was 38 for any computation, and this one is 44 for essentially the longest computation. So... A six game tick penalty for a huge amount of compactness uh, and something that functions just as well. So amusingly, right, obviously this is an improvement, right, and you could probably uh, continue to optimize this machine. It's a little bit more complicated wiring-wise than this one is. Uh, I guess they're both complicated in their own ways, but this one is more about making things fit. This one is making sure that you get the signals to the right place. Um, but they are entirely comparable adders, entirely comparable devices, uh, and this is essentially what I'm going to be using to inform my designs uh, moving forward. So that's what I had for you today. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts or questions about this. I'd be happy to answer. And uh, next time, we will start looking at what's over there and what's over here. Cool. All right. Thank you much.